hello, hello, good evening. Uh, hello, Julio, I see your message in the chat. Uh, okay, I will attend the class as a listener. Okay. Oh, okay, you are at work. Okay, not a problem. In that case, don't worry. Just uh, focus on your job and that's it. Okay, no problem. Uh, Francisco, Antonio, hello. And Ivan, hello, guys. Hello, hello teacher. teacher. Good evening. Hey, great to hear you guys. That's great that you are online today. Uh, we have, let's see, already eight o'clock. Okay, that's fine. Um, let's see. Ah, there is uh, George Oscar is connecting. Hello. Hello, Jorge. How do you do? Good evening, teacher. Hey, good evening, guys. Welcome. Welcome to a new week. Pretty cool to see you. How did you spend it? How did you spend your week, your weekend, not the week? Did you spend any time in, in a place, maybe? Visiting uh, relatives and going out? Yeah? Uh, teacher. Yes, yes. Well, my weekend was very, very good because I rested. A lot of, uh, I enjoy uh, Saturday with two good pizzas. Thank you for me. <laughs> oh, you cooked a pizza. Yeah, yeah. I have a business of pizzas. Yeah. Uh, garlic, bread with garlic. Oh, well, great. And that was uh, Saturday. Uh, and on Sunday with... Um, India's chicken soup with my family. Oh, delicious. Was great my weekend. <laughs> okay, all the weekend eating and eating. Okay. Yeah, Good. yeah, yeah. I really needed that rest. Uh, mm -hmm. when they cancel. <laughs> ah, okay, okay, pretty good. Okay. Nice, uh, even that you had a nice weekend with a lot of food, pizza, chicken soup, India chicken soup. Delicious. All right. Hello, Sophia. Good evening. Welcome. How are you? How do you do? Good evening. Good evening. Hello, Luis Eduardo. Welcome. Welcome back. Good evening, teacher. Hello. Good evening. Uh, let's see. Uh, Melissa, there is Melissa online and Carla, Rene, Alejandra, and Catherine. Hello, girls. Hello. Hello. Welcome, guys. Hi, teacher. Thank you. Hello, hi, good evening, welcome. Yeah. All right, perfect, perfect. Uh, today we begin the third week. Did you complete the assignments, the assignments on on section three and the midterm exam? You did? Yes, did you sure. Yes, yes, I did. Yes, yes, yes I, did. I did. All right. Okay, that's uh, what I wanted to hear, that you completed your assignments. That's great. All right, perfect. This, uh, this is the third week. That means we are going to be working on section number four. Only the section number four, and, and that's it. Okay? Week number three, section number four to complete. Okay. Let's see. Very good, guys. Uh, welcome back from weekend. Uh, how was your weekend? Uh, let's see, Carla. Did you do anything interesting during your weekend? I clean my house, all my house. Clean the house is uh, okay. Is good. <laughs> okay. Okay. Nice. Alejandra and you. Anything interesting? No, I was a sick. Ah, uh, I you were sick. Yes. I was. I was sick. I was sick. Sick. Yes. Yes. Ah, uh, what what happened to you? I don't know. Um, I have a a head pain. Um, I don't know. 
Ah, maybe it's a stress, right? After working a lot of time, you get a stress. You get a stress. Well, maybe it's possible. <laughs> yes, of course. Yeah. That's a lot possible. Ah, you said head head pain, but head pain it is not. The word is headache. Okay. Is a headache, yes. It's a headache. Headache, yes. Okay. Headache. That is, oh, I have a headache, terrible headache. That's it. All right, good. Okay, guys, pretty, pretty good. Thank you for attending the class today. Let's see. Uh, let me open it. We are in the session. What is the session? Do you know? What's the session? Nine, number nine. Number nine, yes. Yeah, tomorrow, number 10. On Wednesday, it's session 11. And on Thursday, it's going to be number 12. Okay, good. Let's see what we have today. What are we going to be doing in this in this lesson? Pre-advanced model one. All right, let's see. Uh, the topic, guys, can you can you can you read it loudly? Can you read it loudly about the topic? Telling stories. Stories. Telling stories. Okay. Uh, what is this picture about? I'm pretty sure that you recognize this picture. What's this? The CPTO. Yes, of course. Yes. Okay, CPTO. That's great. And that is about the Salvadorian folklore. Yeah, the Salvadorian folklore. Pretty good. Okay. I knew that you were going to say exactly that. CPTO. Okay. Um, do you who lives in a different department from San Salvador? Different from San Salvador, who lives in Santa Ana, Sonsonate, uh, Huachapan? From you guys, are you all from San Salvador? Ah, uh, Romeo, yes, where do you live? Can you remind me? In San Vicente, ah, you live in San Vicente, okay. Uh, in San Vicente, is there any type of uh, folklore about the stories? Yes, it's common uh, in, in the with the people talking about the Cipitillo, uh, Siwanaba, etc. Uh, okay. It's very common here. Ah, okay, in San Vicente, yes. Yes, San yeah. Vicente is a part where people know about a lot of folklore things that happened supposedly in the past right okay good san vicente who else who else maybe i don't know la union maybe no our japan no one else okay all right let's see um this picture what is what is the mother doing in the picture? What is she doing? Can you describe the picture? She's talking. She's talking. Stories. Yeah, she is talking. She's telling stories. Stories. Correct. Story. Yeah, because the verb is to tell. She is telling stories to her daughters. To her daughters, correct. Okay. And what is the mother talking about in the picture? Check more closely. What is this? Uh -huh. What is this subject? Do you know? Cohete. Cohete in English. Nave espacial, cohete in English. Who knows? Rocket. Rocket. Rocket? Uh, I remember a program, but it was Rocket Power, but that is cartoon. <laughs> that is cartoon. Uh huh. Great cartoon. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I liked it a lot. Yes, Rocket Power. Okay, but Rocket, no. Okay, we are going to check vocabulary. When you tell stories, you need to know uh, 
the specific vocabulary. This one is a space, a space ship. That is a vocabulary, a spaceship for this subject, this one. Okay, what else is she uh, talking about? The mother is telling stories about? The dragon. About a dragon, flying dragon. Yeah, correct. And what else? The castle. Uh, okay, pronunciation. This is the grammar word. Grammar word. But pronunciation should be castle. Castle. Repeat it. Castle. 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 Yes, castle. 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 Yes. Letter T, no sound, letter T in this word. No sound. So it's like this. Ca castle. Like that. Castle. Yeah, castle. Castle, castle. All right. Good. But, but the space rocket is incorrect. Space rocket. Um, if you want to use it, referring to that object, the space rocket, mm, you can do it, no problem. Yeah, why not? But let me check, space uh, rocket. Suggestions, space rocket, space, uh, um, no, it doesn't appear. Only separate words, only separate words. But a spaceship, let me look for it, a spaceship. I knew, I know it as a spaceship. Ah, now it appears. Yes, a spaceship. Or a space rocket. Yes, you can use it. No problem. All right. Let's see. Let's continue telling stories. What Salvadorian stories do you know, guys? Besides uh, CPT, was already mentioned. And let's see one now. Only those two. But we have more. Uh, do you know more? More folklore? Stories in folklore? What else do we have? La Carreta Chillona. Ah, yes, that is a famous one, correct. Yes, la carreta. Uh huh. All right. What else? ¿Qué más? What else? What else? Only those three. El cadejo. El, ca el cadejo, yeah. Ah, el All cadejo. Right. Uh huh, correct. Cadejo, but no brewing company, right? This cadejo about the story, not about the, the brand. That's it. Yeah, so the brand is, comes from that folklore and they apply it very nicely. All right, Cadejo, uh, uh -huh, La Carreta, what else? La Llorona. Ah, the crying woman, La Llorona, yes. In English, the crying woman, but we have to say La Llorona, correct. La Llorona. El justo fue de la noche, ¿no? <laughs> ah, my, mm, oh, my all right. <laughs> grandmother used to talk about that. El justo pues. That's right. <laughs> all right. Uh huh. Very famous. Yeah, yeah. But nowadays it is not mm, so mentioned. It has is less mentioned. La menciona un poco hoy. Yes. La mujer right. de blanco. Ah, the the woman in white. Uh -huh, correct. Yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. And the taconuda, is, is it the same woman? Same woman or not? Or different? Which one? Taconuda, la taconuda. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> okay, we have that one as well. Okay, guys, you know about... Other... Uh, guys, uh, do you hear me? Yes, teacher. Yes. Okay, okay, cool. Okay, I was scared, but let's see. No.
I can hear you, teacher. Okay, okay, perfect. Okay, I will try not to touch the the speaker, but it's giving me issues. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, teacher. You hear me? Yes, teacher. Yes, yes. yes. Ah, okay, okay, cool. Okay, let's continue. Great, perfect. Okay, let's see. Definitions. We have in this part uh, a couple of definitions. Let's see, Ivan. What is the first definition about this word? Story description, a description either true or imaginary of a connect, connected series of events. Ah, okay, fair. Very good. Event. Yes, okay, thank you. The first word is a story. Can you read again the definition? Um, but this opportunity, Francisco, Antonio, can you read it? The description, yeah, teacher. A description, either true or imaginary, of a connected series of events. Ah, okay. A description, either true or imagined, of a connected series of events. The word is events. Event. Ah, ah correct. Yes, events. That's it. Very good. What is the second definition? Let's see, uh, Luis Eduardo, maybe. What is the next one? Second definition. The word. Tale. 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 A history, especially one that might be invented or difficult to believe. Ah, okay, very good. A story, especially one that might be invented or difficult to believe. The CPTO, what is a CPTO? A story or a tale? A tale. A tale. It's a tale, okay. All the stories that we have in El Salvador, they are tale because we don't know if they are true. I don't think so but maybe they are invented or that people imagined in the past. That is the, the difference between a story and entail. Okay, let's see what is what is this story or tale? This one is? El Cadejo. El Cadejo. Ah, the Cadejo. El Cadejo, black and okay. white. The black dog. In the white and the black. White and black dog. White and black. That's it. Very good. Let's open this link. We are going to open it. Okay. Check. This is a website where you can read in English. Okay. It's difficult to find our folklore is stories or tales in English. Most of them are only in Spanish, but in this website, you can find them. What is the, the title that you can see? Myth, Myth, Myth and Legends of El Salvador. Ah, okay, okay. Check. Two more words to check. Myths. Okay, we are checking vocabulary as well. What is? Myth. Can you repeat it? Myth. 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 Uh, what, is a, what is a myth? 
Origin story. An ancient, you can read it, guys. You can read it. An ancient story. Or set, or set of stories, especially explaining the early history of a group of, of people or about mm, natural events and fact. in facts. Okay, it's talking about that as well. All right, very good. Uh, let's see, Carla, can you help me with uh, with the next one? Carla Rene, with the next word. What is a legend? legend? Check. I am using the dictionary to find more vocabulary or the explanation or the definition. Better. Legend. Legend or legend? Legend. Legend. Do you hear? Legend. Legend. What's a legend? Legends are very old story or set of stories from ancient times or the stories, not always true, that people tell about a famous event or person. Event. Event. Aha, uh -huh. check. Event. 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 The stress on the second syllable. Event. Second syllable. Event. Okay, pretty good. September 14, 2015, ghost stories. All right. We are going to do a couple of things. We are going to do a couple of things. We have all these paragraphs, et cetera, et cetera. But the class, the class is about telling stories. We are going to be doing reading, listening, reading, listening. Okay. Uh, I'm going to play or I'm going to copy this paragraph. Check. I have a second link. All right. This in this website, do you know the AI intelligence? Do you know the AI intelligence? Uh -huh. What is AI? Artificial intelligence. Artificial, correct. Artificial intelligence. And this website uses AI. This is a software. It's pretty cool. You can use it. So I'm going to copy all these text about ghost stories and check what I'm going to do. I will copy and I will paste it on this website. And now we can listen about the pronunciation of all these words that you're going to hear. After listening, you can have a better idea about how to read or how to pronounce these words. Okay. Uh, just listen. I'm going to play it a couple of times so we can listen this pattern. Okay, be ready. Be ready to listen. Ghost stories. Those two words have had the power to inspire your heart to pump excitement through your veins in double time ever since you were a kid. And undoubtedly will do the same as you embark on a getaway to a new country and hear those two words while learning about the local culture and history. Aside from tropical beaches, uncrowded waves, and mouth-watering purposes, El Salvador is rich with legends and folklore that help to contribute to the unique people and culture that make your vacation destination what it is today. While South and Central America are rich with folklore, Many of the legends and stories overlap and vary from one country to the next, each having its own special twist characterizing it as unique. A great deal of these tales go back to the colonization of El Salvador and are still told to scare children today, mostly used to keep people from wandering alone in the night. While the options are overwhelming, here are a few of the more prominent tales told in El Salvador to send shivers down your spine. All right. In this one is like a uh, kind sounds kind of robotic, but in this in this part you can choose the the voice of the speaker. But this website is paid. 
es pagado, right? But you have like, like three times that you can select one person. After the three times, it tells you, ah, you need to subscribe, but you need to pay. But we can we can try. Let's see, one more time, but with a different voice. Okay, be ready to listen again. Ghost stories. Those two words have had the power to inspire your heart to pump excitement through your veins in double time ever since you were a kid. And undoubtedly will do the same as you embark on a getaway to a new country and hear those two words while learning about the local culture and history. Aside from tropical beaches, uncrowded waves, and mouth-watering pupusas, El Salvador is rich with legends and folklore that help to contribute to the unique people and culture that make your vacation destination what it is today. While South and Central America are rich with folklore, many of the legends and stories overlap and vary from one country to the next, each having its own special twist characterizing it as unique. A great deal of these tales go back to the colonization of El Salvador and are still told to scare children today, mostly used to keep people from wandering alone in the night. While the options are overwhelming, here are a few of the more prominent tales told in El Salvador to send shivers down your spine. All right, there it is. Okay, that was the introductory paragraph about the stories, ghost stories in El Salvador. Okay, let's see. We are going to read the first one is, check, number one. La Llorona. The, la Llorona, I was going to say it in English. <laughs> okay, but it's in Spanish, La Llorona. Okay, let's see. Uh, maybe, uh, Sofia, maybe you can help me read about La Llorona, Sofia, about this famous tale in El Salvador. It's pretty short. It's not long. All right. I'm going to make it bigger so you can read it. There. Okay, Sofia. Okay. Um, this sad, ghostly woman can be heard crying along the river banks at night, looking for any children that may be unfortunate enough to cross her path in an attempt to get back at the man she loved who chose another woman. La Llorona decided to drown her children in an act of reverence. Once she realized the horror that she had committed, she drowned herself as well. However, she was not allowed to pass on into the afterlife and was sent back to the earth to find her children and gain their forgiveness. Trapped between the living world and the spirit world, she now wanders around crying and searching for her children and isn't afraid to take any random children in the hopes of passing them off as her own. Never ever follow the sound of her cries in the night. She may try to down to drown your next. Oh, okay, check. This is like not to do. Uh, ever follow the sound? Never, 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 never ever follow the sound of her cries in the night. She might try to drown you next. That's it. All right. Thank you, Sophia. Uh, Sophia, do you have any difficult word uh, that you couldn't pronounce? What words did you find difficult to pronounce in this pattern? Okay, um, I think, let me see. Okay. For vocabulary, you can ask about vocabulary too. Trap. Uh, this one. I, I don't know what. Ah, uh, trapped. 
Okay, crafting is uh, when you are, for example, in your house, the doors are closed, the windows are closed, you cannot go out, you are trapped in your house. Like uh, the pandemia, we were trapped, everyone was trapped in the pandemic. Got it? Okay, and... Yeah. What else? Guys, uh, what about you? Attempt. Attempt. Uh, let me see. Attempt. Uh, where is attempt? I'm going to look for it. Attempt. Ah, in an attempt to get back at the man. Okay, attempt is uh, uh, when you try to do something and you fail. You try again. You fail again. You try. You try. And you try. That's an attempt. Intento. Okay. Thank you. All right. Very good, guys. So what about you? Vocabulary that you would like to know? Guys, the rest? All right. Uh -huh. Okay. Someone else would like to read it, the same paragraph. But remember, because the class is about telling stories, you have to sound like if you were telling okay, the story in a forest or in a meeting or reunion with with kids, with teenagers, etc. Okay. Uh -huh. Teacher, yes. how, how do you say she had it is committed? Uh, this one uh, committed. Yes, it's right. Committed. Yeah, committed. Commit, commit it. Okay. That's it. Commit it. Yes. Okay. All right. Someone else? Oh, oh, sorry. We were in this part. Uh huh. A volunteer to read it. Drowning. Uh, uh drown. Yes. Ah, we teach me. What is drown? Mm -hmm. Okay. A moment. Okay, drown is uh, you are swimming, you are swimming and suddenly you cannot swim anymore and you feel like, oh, help me, help me, I'm drowning. That means that you are going down underwater. Be careful when you go to the, to the sea. Okay, you might drown if you cannot swim. Got it? Got it, got it? Yes. Yeah. Okay, cool. Okay, uh, let's see who said me, who wants, who wants to read it. Let's see, Julio, right? Me, yeah. Okay, Julio. All right, pretty good. Okay. This uh, ghostly woman can be her, her crying along the river's bank at night, looking for any children that may be unfortunate enough to cross her path in an attempt to get back at the, at the man she loved who shoots another woman. La Llorona decided to, to drown her children in an act of revenge. Once she realized the horror that she, she had committed, she drew herself as well. However, she was not allowed to pass on, on in, into the afterlife and was sent back to the earth to find her children and, and gain their forgiveness. Trapped between the living world and she spirit world, she now wanders around crying and searching for her children and isn't afraid to take any random children in the hopes of, of passing them of her own. Never ever follow the sound of her cries in the night. She might try to drown your necks. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. All right. Let's see, uh, this, uh, this is a simple past verb that it is pronounced decided. Decided. Okay, good, very good. Next story, next story, you see the picture. Next story is El, el, tab el tabudo, what's that? Have you heard about el tabudo? 
No. I don't know, teacher. This is new, new, new tale for you. Okay, let's listen about this story, and then we are going to read. Okay, just listen. A popular tale among fishermen, El Tabuto is also known as the man with big knees. According to legend, he was once a wealthy fisherman who was one day taken by the sea and eventually reappeared as something more fish than man, his signature being his large, knobby knees. He now awaits all visitors to lakes and lagoons, appearing to people as a humble fisherman in order to win over their trust and confidence so that he can lure them out to the middle of the lake. Once he gets his victims where he wants them, he reveals his true appearance and turns the men into large, colorful fish and transforms the women into sirens of the sea. El Salvador is full of delicious fish, so beware of the man with big knees the next time you go out to catch your meal. Oh, okay, that's kind of interesting. Okay, to be honest, I have never heard about the tabudo before. That's new for me. Okay, let's see. Da -da -da -da. L -l 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 who is gonna read? Maybe Jorge. Jorge, can you help me with the reading in this part? Okay, a uh, popular talent uh, among fishmen. El tabudo is old now as the man with the big necks. According to Len, he was once a waitry fisherman who was one day taken by the sea and the eventual, eventually eventually re reappeared reappear as something more fish that man. His signature bent his large no 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 be nice no believe he now await all visitors to lay and the lagoons appearance to people as a humble fishman in order to win over the true and the confidence so that he can lose then out to the middle of the lay on he gets his victim where he went to them. He re revealed his true ap appearance. Ap appearance or to the man into lay colorful fish and transfer the woman into sirens of the sea. El Salvador is full of delicious fish, so beware of the men with the big necks. The text, then the next time you go out to catch your meal. Yes, okay, pretty good. Thank you. All right, maybe Alejandra wants to read the same paragraph. Beatriz and Ivania once, just once, one more time. Okay. okay. A popular tale among fishermen, El Tabudo is also known as the man with big knees. According to legend, he was once a wealthy fisherman who was one day taken by the sea and eventually reappeared and sometime more fish that man. His signature being his large Novi knees he now awaits a visitor to lake and lagoons, appearing to people as an humble fisherman in order to win over their trust and confidence so that he can lure them, them out to the middle of the lake. Once he gets his victims where he wants them, he reveals his true appearance and turns the men into large, colorful fish and transforms the woman into sirens of the sea. El Salvador is full of delicious fish, so beware of the men with big knives. 
needs. Mm -hmm. The next time you go out to catch your meal. Your meal. Do you like uh, do you like fish, guys? You like fish? You like eating fish? At the beach, maybe or yes, restaurant. Yes. Art. Be careful with the yeah, taboo the next time. Yes, I it's like. delicious. Yeah, it is delicious. Yes. yes, I like. Yeah. Okay. Good. But be careful with the taboo. Though next time that you get a fish or when you are going to eat fish. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. Uh, guys, when you have questions maybe about a vocabulary in your free time, you can you can check those words using the dictionary so you can learn new vocabulary from the reading the next the next one okay this is a picture about the tabudo but the next tale is famous famous is about el catejo el catejo all right i'm gonna copy the paragraph and we are gonna Listen, this this AI intelligence. Let's see. Al Cadejo. This story comes in the form of two huge dogs, one with black fur and one with white. One representing good, while the other represents evil. The Black Kadejo is an evil spirit who appears to those who wander alone late at night, using his red-hot coal-like eyes to hypnotize his victims in an attempt to steal their souls. The White Kadejo is there to provide protection for his faithful believers, especially children. Some report to have seen a brawl break out between the two in a fight for the soul, while others claim that the White Kadejo has appeared to help a drunk wanderer get home safely. Some versions of the legend state that after realizing how many difficulties and obstacles arise for mortal humans in everyday life, some good fortune gods decided to create the White Kadejo in an attempt to offer some sort of comfort and protection to those of goodwill and good faith on earth. After seeing this, the devil got jealous and decided to make a black dog of his own to wreak havoc, counteracting the powers of the white dog. Regardless of the origins of El Cadejo, it's safe to say that the story inspires children to avoid wandering about after dark. Okay, that all was it pretty fast. Okay, uh -huh. next, next uh, storyteller. Next. Who wants to read about that? Yes. This is your opportunity to practice some reading skills and pronunciation as, as well. You are checking grammar, you are checking pronunciation as well. Okay, Francisco, Antonio, go ahead. Thank you, teacher. El Cadejo. This story comes in the form of two huge dogs, one white black for um, one with white. One representing good while the other represents evil. The black cadejo is an evil spirit who appears to those who wander along late at night using his red hot coal light eyes uh, to in, hypnotize. hypnotize his victims in an attempt to steal their souls. The wild cadejo Cadejo is there to provide protection for his faithful believers, especially children. Some report to have seen a brawl break out between the two in a fight for the soul. While others claim that the white Cadejo has appeared to help a drunk wanderer get home safely. Some versions of the Legend states that after realizing how many difficulties and obstacles arise for mortal humans in everyday life, some good fortune got decided the, to create the white cadejo in an attempt to offer some sort of comfort and protection to those of good wild and good fights on earth. After seeing this, 
the devil got jealous and, and decided to make a black dog of his own of his own to Greg, Greg, Greg Havoc. Con, counteracting counteracting the powers of the white dog regardless of the origins of El Cadejo. It's safe to say that the story inspired inspires children to avoid wandering about after dark. Okay, thank you, Francisco. That means that you should not walk on the streets very late at night, especially, you know, right? If you if you drink, because you might see the cadejo, and depends on that, you can see the black cadejo or the white. That is that is good. The white is good and the black is is the evil. Is evil. Okay, pretty good. Thank you. Thank you for that reading. Okay, great. Let's see. Check. There is the representative picture of the legend. This is a legend. Okay. The next one, I have pretty famous as well. La? Uh -huh. Cipitio's mother, people said. Have you heard? People say, ah, no, Cipitio is Cipitio's mother. No idea. Let's, to check this, we are going to read, we are going to listen the story. Okay. Uh, ba, 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 let me paste it. Da, da, da. Okay. La Saguanaba, Sawanaba, Sigwa, or Segwa, refers to a horrible woman, previously known as Sawethwet, and is a ghost to beware of late at night. She appears in the night as a beautiful woman, in a sheer, often white dress, with long, beautiful hair. She summons men wandering in the dark, often targeting those who are drunk, conceited, and looking for a conquest, as well as men who are unfaithful to their women. She then seduces the men who are looking to seduce her, but once they get close enough to touch the men thinking they have just about scored, she reveals her true self transforming into a thing of horror. Some versions say that she was so terrifyingly ugly that she was nearly deformed, while others say her face was a bare skull, and some variations even claim that she had the head of a horse. Regardless, she is such a terrible sight to see that the man who has the misfortune of laying his eyes on her will either die of fright or go completely mad. La Saguanaba came to be this way when, as Sawethwet, she was married to the son of Tlaloc, the god of the rains, and had affairs while he was away at war. Oh, okay. Let's see. What I tell you about this is that you have to pay to continue. But if you don't want to pay, let's see. There is, you can find another website with a similar uh, interactivity. So you can listen and read at the same time. But the previous one, uh, free, David, free, free, it's free. Let's check. And became pregnant with the son of her lover as a result of these affairs. As punishment for her seduction and infidelity, Tlaloc sought out the help of an almighty god named Teotl, and together they cursed and condemned not only Sihuthwit, but her son as well. Now, Sigwanaba is stuck in a state of horror and deceit, and terrorizes those who are guilty of the same crime she once committed, and is stuck to forever look for her son. Okay, that was it. Okay, good. Let's check. Uh, did you know this, this word, guys? Did you know this word? See what wet? See yeah. what wet? Yes, uh -huh. teacher. You you knew it. I didn't. I didn't have idea about this this word. What is a sea wet wet? Let's see if in Google we can we can find something similar. 
Ah, ah ok, check. A beautiful woman and a curse for eternity. This is the story of La Ciguanaba. Stories, folklore, legends, leyendas, cuentos, y más. This is a Spooky Tales. Listen, escuchen, at your own risk. We live in an apartment, and you hear a little pitter-patter. Okay. In this part, you can listen this, but what it matters is this. Check. This is the real picture of the Siwa. La Siwa. Where is the Siwa in? Honduras. 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 Can you read the paragraph? In Honduras. Okay. She's, She's no. Carla, yeah. She's known as La Siwa. And in Costa Rica as Sewa. All right, continue, continue reading, please. Her legend is also known in Mexico, but somewhat, somehow has become tied conflict with Masiwatli. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Extavai, I guess. Which means horse face woman, which might be two different but similar stories. Oh, I didn't know that La Ciguanaba was pretty famous in Honduras, Costa Rica, and Mexico. I thought it was only in El Salvador. Check it. That's why it's important the reading. You can find facts, facts, or I don't know, maybe imaginary uh, things about the stories or tales there is okay let's see can you continue we are going to continue reading about the siwa because it's interesting maybe uh, beatrice wendy catherine francisco again and romeo maybe romeo in yeah salvador. in el salvador according to legend she was orig originally called Siwa wet, which means beautiful women in Nahuatl. Legend tells that she used her charms and with help from a bruja, she got the prince Jason to marry her. Jason went to war and Siwa wet took this time to have affairs and of these affairs. Um, she feared a child known as El Cipitillo. El Cipitillo's father was a girl called Lucero de la Maña, Man, Mañana, Lucifer Morningstar. Uh, okay. Now, it's interesting. Okay. See? Now, yeah, please continue. Oh, okay. Now, here the legend differs a little. Some versions say that Tlaloc, father of Lucero de la Mañana, discovered that Siwewet would leave his grandson alone to meet with lovers, and for that he cursed, cursed her. So, that when she was first sent, she ap ap appeared. Ap she appeared. Ap appeared to be beautiful, but when she turned around, she became a horrible horse-faced woman. Uh, she was cursed to wander, uh, she was cursed to wander the countryside, praying on mujeriegos, men that, men that sleep around. Men uh, will see her often naked, or in a sea trough gown. Gown. A gown Bound. is like a dress. It's similar like a dress, but the one that you use, women use to sleep at night. Okay. Uh, and followed her. Then she will turn around and frighten this man to death uh, with her face. 
we can hear face. Okay, okay, just a moment. Here in this part, the word is naked. Naked. Yes, with naked. no clothes, no no shirt, no pants, no boxer, no nothing. Naked. <laughs> Completely naked. That's the word. All right, very good. Uh, I would like to continue reading and listening to you guys reading about this, but unfortunately we don't have more time, but I'm going to place this link in the presentation so you can, you can find this. Uh, pretty interesting. I, there are some things that I didn't know about La Cibonada. All right, so I advise you to practice on reading with it, with this website. It's pretty cool. Okay. Uh, questions? Uh, questions, guys, about any part of the class? Anything? No? Not at all? Okay. Remember, no you can paste the paragraph, paste them in this website so you can listen the pronunciation of the words, you can read, you can get more more vocabulary with definitions. So there is a lot of material you can use to improve more in your, in your English. Okay, guys, uh, one more time, thank you for being online in this first class in the third week. See you tomorrow, have a nice night. And take care. Be careful with with the cabello. Don't go out walking alone <laughs> at night. Don't drink. Don't follow women. You guys be careful with, with women. Don't <laughs> okay. See you tomorrow, teacher. Yeah, see you see tomorrow, you guys. Too. Take care. Bye, Thank guys. you, teacher. Bye. See you tomorrow. Bye. Good night, everyone. Have a good night, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.